Hello, I'm Chris Williams from Read Comics, They're Bad For You. Today we're going to be reviewing Good Omens, Episode 4. We begin the episode with Atlantis rising from the ocean with a cruise ship on its shore, or rather on the land of Atlantis itself. The cruise ship is greeted by Atlanteans taking off their breathing helmets, and the captain is amused and surprised at all of this. We then go th to see Adam Young and his friends. Adam tells his friends about aliens visiting Earth and giving peaceful declarations of peace. And his friends don't really believe him. And uh, Adam acts a bit strange because his own powers inside of him as the Antichrist are beginning to become stronger. And his friends seem to be wary of him. We then journey over to see a Xerophile who's trying to, con who's trying to talk to the Ar Archangel Gabriel. A Xerophile tells him about Atlantis and about how the rainforests are returning and it's all written in this book. Gabriel says, why, do, why should they care about what words that are written in some human book? But, as, but Zerphile tells him, Armageddon was starting that day. While Gabriel says, yeah, it's going to be a little past, past tea time after lunch. So what? Zerphile continues to reason with Gabriel, saying that they should do something to stop it. Z Gabriel says, says that Azurfile should lose some weight and just report in for the big battle that's going to be won today. So so there he tells Azurfile there's nothing he can do and just jo just uh, get his sword and get ready for the final battle. Later on, Gabriel is contacted by by some other angels and he learns that Azurfile has been befriending Crowley the demon. Now, Michael is very disappointed pointed in Azurphile, so he sends his goon squad, consisting of the guy who was at uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, who go, went around turning people into salt, and, and a couple of female angels down to see Azurphile and ask him what he's doing. Unpronounced to Michael, one of the female angels is in cahoots with the demon Lucor. Now, she has a has a plan with him she, because apparently she wants to make sure the apocalypse happens properly. So she's willing to work with an evil demon to see that it comes true. At least I think that's what she's doing. Because from my perspective, she's betrayed heaven. Now, Michael's goon squad nearly beat up a Zerphile. And he is rather put out by this, and he says that we're angels. We should be making sure that everything keeps working and not let the world end. And he just looks on at the, as the other angels are sent back to heaven, saying that they're going to get ready for the final battle. Now, we switch over to Percival, who's been driving his car over to Traffield, the home of the Antichrist. Now, Percival has been ordered by the witch hunter sergeant to look for witches, and also to keep an eye out on Adam Young. Now, unpronounced to both of the men, Adam Young is actually the Antichrist. Well, they're in for one hell of a surprise. Uh, I'm not so sure that bell that the witch hunter sergeant gave to Percival will actually, well, it's, the bell is said to be able to drive away demons. I'm not so sure it's going to work on the Antichrist from what I've seen of his power. Well, Percival had a very tremendously weird day. First, he ended up meeting aliens who came down to greet him with a, with a declaration of world peace and, well, universal peace, I guess. And then his car crashes because a couple of uh, Asian people had d been digging a tunnel all the way from Asia. And his car had hit the pothole they dug, and he ended up in a crash. Now, Adam Young and his friends find him, and they take her over to s take him to see Anathema. Anathema had been waiting for Percival because one of Agnes Nutter's prophecies foretold that Percival, the great great descendant of the man who burned Agnes Nutter at the at the stake, would meet her her great 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 granddaughter 
Anathema. She also said that Anathema and Percival will end up beginning into a relationship, apparently. Now, we switch over to Adam Young. At, when he's at Anathema's house, he sees a picture of the devil or Satan or even the Antichrist himself. Well, not it's not a picture of Adam Young, anyway. It's just this demonic creature. And, and Adam Young has been having to deal with his powers, trying to activate. He keeps hearing voices say, saying, Make it real. Make it happen. Make it real. And he looks at this picture of this demon. And, well, if you've seen anything of the trailer, then you know that there's going to be a big red monster. Now, Adam Young ends up snapping at his friends, saying that they can't leave, even though his friends wanted to leave and go home. And for a moment, it looks like none of them were even able to move anymore. They just stood there. Adam says he's sorry, and he says he'll see his friends later. Now, you can see, by, see that Adam is starting to suffer from the power. is starting to mess with his mind. He, get, he seems to be becoming more and more unhinged. Now, we switch over to Haster. Haster, who is now in the fields of Armageddon, he's talking to another demon, and they're working in, they're, they're planning for, the, for Armageddon to start this afternoon. And one of the demons ends up making a couple of jokes, and Haster kills him for it. Now, when the time rolls around, the warlock... The son of the American senator shows up, and Haster greets him. Now, Haster finds something strange. He doesn't see any hellhound anywhere around. And all, at, all Warlock does is say, You're, he continues to insult Haster. Haster then realizes that this boy, this supposed Antichrist, is just a regular little human boy. He's not the Antichrist. And he ends up screaming, Crowley! Because he knows somehow Crowley was involved and it's probably his fault. Now, we switch over back over to Anathema and Percival. Now, I can't really show what they're doing and they don't really show it in the show. Well, Anathema, from the prophecy her great-great-grandmother had given her, well, she gets it on Percival because, well, Adam Young's powers are completely going insane now. There's a tornado ripping its way through Trafville in the middle of England. And all Percival can say is, well, this is England. We can't get tornadoes. And as they as they see that, Anathema, well, I guess both her and Percival, decide if they're going to die, they're going to die, not die virgins, and they get it on. It's a funny show, and you don't see anything, but you see a lot of hand grabbing of grabbing objects with whatever the hell they're doing. They Apparently they did it under a bed and stuff. And it's really quite funny. Now, Haster, with the other demon, Licker, go and see Crowley. Now, unpronounced to them, Crowley has a big big pot of holy water given to him by a Xerophile. And, well, you know that joke where you have a bucket of water over your door? It's not so fu much funny anymore if that bucket of water contains acid. And, well, holy water to a demon is basically that, if you've seen any vampire movie. And Licker is the first one through the door into Crowley's office. He's about ready to kill Crowley. And he has a big smile on his face. Well, that smile is literally melted off his face as the, as the bucket goes down upon him. And he melts into the ground. Now, Haster is, well, terrified that Crowley would do such a thing, even though Haster is a evil demon. And goes after Crowley. Crowley traps Haster and then goes off to see Azurphile. Now, Azurphile's trying to contact the Almighty and he ends up running afoul of the Witch Hunter Sergeant because the Witch Hunter Sergeant thinks he's some sort of demon or witch. And Azurphile is just saying, my good sir, that has nothing to do with this. Could you leave now? I'm busy. And trying to make sure not to get into a, into a magic circle. This is just after he's been able to t contact the Metatron, the voice of God. Literally God's secretary, I'll say that. It's something else, but that same thing that presidents have. Well, either way, he st a Xerophile steps into the portal. He accidentally do that, trying to make sure the witch hunter sergeant doesn't do it. And, it being, and he, a Xerophile ends up being blasted his way back to heaven.
Well, he's going to he's going to talk to the Almighty now. Now. Now, uh, the witch hunter sergeant thinks he's actually banished a demon. And he, he's all smiling at himself. He has no idea what is really going on, and let alone that the world is about to end. And this, and he leaves. But not before he, I, for, well, he did, yeah, not before knocking over uh, one of the candles that was just around for the magic circle for a Xerophile to contact the Almighty and setting a setting a Xerophile's bookshop on fire. And this is how this episode ends. With a Xerophile's little bookshop on fire and a Xerophile nowhere to be seen. Meanwhile, Crowley is going over to see a Xerophile to try and reason with him to try and escape with him so that he doesn't have to be, neither of them have to be there during Armageddon and have to face judgment from God or the demons. Now, if you like this review, subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. If you're watching my videos but you're not subscribed, please subscribe. I want you to hit that bell. I want you to get notifications for all my upcoming videos. Also, hit that like button and leave some comments down below. And remember, keep checking back in future videos for more information on my own upcoming comic book, Scum Dogs. I guarantee you it'll at least be a great comic. I'm Chris Williams, and I'll be back again tomorrow with another review. I'll see you all again then.